Candice Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, October 25th. So today we have the moon in Leo energy here all day. Of course, we just shifted in this Leo energy here yesterday morning and of course quickly moved into that last quarter moon popping off in Leo energy, getting us heart aligned, getting us bold, brave and courageous to do the hard things. And of course, now that we're in Scorpio season, we have a deep change, a deep transformation taking place not only within us, but of course preparing us for the major changes, the major transformations transformations outside of us. That last quarter moon, of course, was a time of reflection, taking us all the way back to the new moon solar eclipse in Libra energy that we're still very much under the influence of until November 1st, when the new moon in Scorpio pops off. So of course, there's been a lot of fluctuation, a lot of change, a lot of need for improvement, for adjustment. And although we're still kind of in a daze and in a haze, things are starting to become a lot more clear, specifically because Mercury is in the Scorpio energy as well, digging things up in order to break things down in order to get to the nitty gritty matter of fact truth of the matter of the situation of the circumstance. So with the moon in Leo here all day, of course, we're operating from our heart space and we're a little bit more outgoing than we have been in the most recent past. And we're ready to boss up. We're ready to take on whatever we need to do, whatever it is that we need to pursue. And because we're in a closure chapter, this is about taking action and making moves to eliminate, to detach, to release our energy, our connection to the old, again, that old version of self, that old realm and reality that that version of self is built, we're no longer resonating with it. We're taking stock, we're taking inventory of who and what needs to stay needs to go. So there's definitely a little bit of drama playing out again, the Leo energy definitely looking for attention, we can be a little bit extra, but hopefully it is in the most positive, most entertaining of ways. If we're tapping into a lot of shadow work, which we do in Scorpio energy, you could be attention seeking in all of the wrong ways. So definitely pay attention to that. We have nine different aspects taking place here today. Eight of those aspects are going to involve the moon. So the moon in this Leo energy quickly making an awkward interaction with Neptune, who is retrograde in his rulership here in Pisces energy. This is definitely us trying to push ourselves in the mood, in the attitude to kind of imagine what our life, what our realm, what our reality would actually look like and feel like if we didn't have these challenges, didn't have these obstacles, didn't have a list of things to do, kind of bridging the gap from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. We have have some intuitive insights coming online, really changing our heart space. And again, kind of illuminating what it is that we have to do, what it is that we have to pursue, what we have to build, what we have to create. And essentially right now, what we have to boss up, take charge over to clear out, creating the time, the energy, the space for all of these new visions to actually have a place to be built. The only aspect that does not involve the moon involves Mercury. Mercury, of course, in the Scorpio energy detective hats on. We are thinking very deeply. We are kind of probing with the right kind of questions to ourselves, to the people, to the world around us in order for us to come to a deeper sense of meaning, a deeper sense of truth, a deeper sense of understanding. And of course, we have Mercury making a very positive interaction with Pluto. Not only is Pluto in his rulership over the Scorpio energy, that Mercury is in, but of course, he's in his rulership over this whole damn season. He is at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of this Capricorn energy, giving us a new idea on where we have to restructure, rebuild, redesign our physical realms. And of course, there's an intensity that comes with Mr. Pluto and this intensity because it involves Mr. Mercury is going to be an intensity of our headspace. We are like tunnel vision in on a certain topic and theme borderline obsessed if you don't 
really mind that particular type of obsession because we're, we need to come to a solution. We need to understand things better. And so this intensity, these blinders get put on so that we can focus on one problematic situation at a time. And because Pluto is a part of it, we know that there is an ending, a death needed in our physical lives, in our physical form, again, in Capricorn energy in order for a rebirth, a resurrection, a true transformation to actually take place. And so this is like a a reorganizing, a redesigning, a restructuring, not only of our thought process, but of the way that we're looking back and understanding how it is that we actually ended up here, how it is that we created this physical realm, this reality, where it actually stemmed from. Again, most likely pain and trauma wounds. We are in Scorpio season. We do have to face the darkest parts of self and Mercury and Pluto definitely kind of, again, honing in on those problematic areas in order for us to come to a very specific understanding of what needs to be done in what order, what kind of plan and strategy we have to kind of implement in order to tackle all of the things. Cautionary note, if you find yourself in situations and circumstances where intense conversations, heart to hearts are definitely taking over, please understand that Mercury rules over communication as well. And if you're the one asking the questions, if you're the one digging, if you're the one kind of probing other people to get those answers, you're definitely going to come off as an interrogation officer. And those people are going to be highly defensive because nobody enjoys to be interrogated. Yes, you could have some deep, profound, let's call it articulated thoughts that you want to get out, that you want to get off your chest, speaking very matter of fact, very down to the point. It is the way that it is. However, there is this, I'm going to call it resistance to hearing this, this resistance to acknowledging it, this resistance to receiving it well. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. We have the moon in this Leo energy going to make a very harsh interaction with Saturn. Here comes a reality check. Saturn, of course, he is the Lord of Karma. He rules over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. He is retrograde, meaning the energy is introverted into our inner realm for some reflection, some review. And in Pisces energy, this is the review of our belief system. This is the review of the vision, the dream, the goal that we once had that maybe we achieved, maybe we didn't. Do we even care about it anymore? Probably not. Why? Because the old version of self is no longer here. The new version of self is rooted in. And because of that, we have some bossing up to do. We need new willpower, new determination, new motivation to actually see things through. And of course, at this particular juncture, getting a reality check is the last thing that the moon and Leo energy wants to receive because again we want to kind of you know put ourselves out there we want to have fun we want to be playful and mr saturn bringing the reality check kind of squashing our fun and therefore we're feeling a little bit hurt a little bit wounded if you will by the actual truth of the reality of the matter and of course there is this element where we don't want to deal with the truth we don't want to deal with reality but this is what scorpio season is all about we have to be accountable and responsible for our own part for our own role and truth be told we're in our own damn way at this particular juncture we're focused more on where it is that we want to go from here instead of actually figuring out how to clean up the mess of the past in which we're currently sitting in so the moon goes ahead gets into the boxing ring squares off with mercury so our heart Heart space, the moon in the heart space of the zodiac and Leo energy, getting into the boxing ring, fighting it out, squaring off is going to highlight the conflict, the growing pains, if you will, between our heart and our head. Our head space, Mercury is in Scorpio energy. We're doing a deep dive. We're taking our intellect and our intuition. We're kind of blending them together. We're coming up with different perspectives, different lenses, if you will, to look back to figure out how it is that we've gotten here. Again, identify the problematic areas, figure out where certain aspects, certain conversations need to be addressed in order for us to get a lot of things off of our chest. We're seeking the truth of course, but our heart space, Leo energy just wants to have fun, just wants to make moves, wants to initiate something new, wants to be fully expressive. Again, bringing a little bit of drama, bringing a little bit of attention seeking. Mercury, on the other hand, we just want to keep quiet. Again, the Scorpio energy is very reserved, very much in the observer mode until something strikes you so freaking intensely that you have to speak upon it. And those words that usually come out are very direct and they're not meant to be hurtful by any ways, but 
we're not talking to ourselves in the best inner dialogue. We're surely not kind of articulating ourselves in the way that other people need us to speak upon. And so our heart space, our head space, they're not on the same page. We're going through a growing pain. It is very hard, hard because we're heart aligned with what it is that we want in the future. But we have to rectify the shadow parts of the past or else we're going to end up in the same situation and circumstances repeating the past patterns and behaviors that, again, we just don't want to feed into. The moon in Leo then going to get trined with Chiron. What does that mean? It means that we have like-minded elements. Thank goodness. Come and note of those particular tension-filled conflicts. We need a little bit of grace. We need a nudge in the right direction. We need to feel a little bit better. Chiron, of course, being the wounded healer. Retrograde in Aries energy has everything to do with this new version of self. Because this is a trine, this means that it's fire on fire energy, fire on fire action, which helps us burn away the funk, the heaviness of our thoughts, of our heart space, the emotions in which we're carrying in order to reignite a new passion, new fire, new flame, new inspiration, new motivation. And especially where Chiron, because he's being aspected in a positive way, we're feeling good about this new version of self. We're feeling strong. We're feeling bold. We're feeling brave. We're feeling courageous. We're feeling all of those things that are bossing us up to a level of accountability and responsibility that many of us have been running away from for a very long time. So emotionally speaking, we are looking forward to op to the opportunity to grow, to heal, to evolve, to make a little bit of progress. The moon is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance and blessings, who is retrograde again, internalized energy, taking a good look at where in this Gemini energy, we have information, we have wisdom, we have knowledge bouncing around within us that we have not integrated, we have not put to practice. This is about reviewing the old ways of learning, the old ways of communicating, the old ways of actually taking the information and knowledge that we learn, especially through the tough love life lessons that we have to learn the hard way and actually do something with it. So lucky for us, this is a positive energy. We have fire and air coming together to create a spark, to have some sort of creative solution emerge, to put us in a more optimistic, confident type of perspective, mood and attitude, especially compared on where we kind of started the morning with some of those darker aspects. And this is just going to help us kind of piece together where it is that guess what? We don't necessarily have to start something new. We just have to breathe life into the old. There are old aspects of self. There are old life lessons. There are old, let's call it learning chapters that we can revisit with a new level of awareness, a new level of consciousness, a new set of eyes, and actually get excited over something that we already initiated that again, got put on the back burner. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with the sun, the sun, of course, shining a bright light in Scorpio energy. Where does the change, the transformation need to take place? Where are there old programs and conditions and pains and traumas blocking this progress? Where do we have new wants, needs, desires for our lives? And where are the fears, doubts and insecurities popping up? holding us back from doing just that. So anytime that the sun and the moon are coming together, of course, there's going to be an aha moment, an emotional awareness of what it is that we need to do, what we need to pursue, what we want, need and desire. The moon, of course, in this Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. We're bold, we're brave, we're courageous. We believe that as long as we can dream it, we can actually achieve it. And the sun in Scorpio being empowered as we are when it is a positive aspect, we actually believe that too. But man, do we have to shit or get off the pot? Do we have to boss up in ways in order to close the door on the past and create a space for these future goals and visions to actually have a place to be born, to be brought to life, to be manifested here in the physical form? The moon goes ahead, makes an awkward interaction with the north node in Aries energy. So that north node trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us to think about our future, trying to think about this next mission, this next purpose. Here's the thing. The moon in Leo energy likes to be present, likes to kind of, you know, hype ourselves up about the, you know, things to come. But because we're in Scorpio energy, again, the early days of Scorpio energy, we have a little bit more cleanup to do before we're going to A, have the clarity that we need in order to move on and move forward, and B, actually be in a place of empowerment to take action to make moves. Heads up, we're still under the eclipse energy until the new moon in Scorpio on November 1st. We are still 
kind of, you know, wrapping up the loose ends. And until we kind of shift into Scorpio season, especially reaching that halfway mark, that's when we're going to see that the endings and the closures are coming to an essential ending point, And we actually get the opportunity to initiate, to begin to start something new. The last thing that we have going on here today, very interesting uh, aspect, because the moon in Leo is going to make a positive interaction with Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. Why is that interesting, you may ask? Well, because we started off with the day with the moon and Neptune in a very awkward interaction. They weren't really getting along. There was a little bit of confusion there. There was a little bit of heaviness there. And now we're ending the day in a positive way, which means that we are gaining information and insight. We are gaining the energy needed. We are gaining the epiphanies, the, let's call it, uh, confidence in order to actually believe that the vision that we are conjuring up in our mind's eye, in our heart space of what it is that we actually want to manifest is in alignment with our higher self. We feel this calling. We feel this, let's call it divine energy backing us for a very short amount of time. We're feeling like all is right in the world. This is a refreshing energy, a renewal energy that really just kind of gives us all the good vibes to really lean into that heart space, really identify what it is that we desire without ruining it, without speaking fear in it, without kind of, you know, talking about the to-do list that stands in between us in this present moment and where it is that we desire to be.